Blue Origin has just pulled off a perfect landing of the New Glenn booster onto the Jacklin drone ship, their first truly flawless attempt. It's a big moment, and many people are calling it a breakthrough. But here's the thing. As impressive as it looks, this is something SpaceX has been doing for years. Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy have performed landings like this hundreds of times. And when it comes to Starship, SpaceX moved beyond this method a long time ago. So, why can't New Glenn's landing approach compare to Starship's Mechazilla catch system? Let's dive into today's episode of Alpha Tech. Yes, Starship and New Glenn aren't just heavy rockets. They're both true super heavy launch vehicles. And the moment they entered the scene, SpaceX and Blue Origin were locked into a no-nonsense rivalry. Competition is always healthy. Every time one side scores a breakthrough or hits a new milestone, both companies benefit. They push each other forward, day after day. And just recently, after a long 10-month wait since New Glenn's first flight, Blue Origin finally launched its second mission on the afternoon of November 13th, just a few days ago. And to be fair, the results were well worth the wait. The company chalked up two major achievements, a successful booster landing and the flawless deployment of a NASA support satellite for Mars research. Both achievements are undeniably impressive, especially considering Blue Origin pulled them off on only New Glenn's second flight. But here's the reality. These are things SpaceX has been doing for years and doing constantly, every week, not once in a blue moon. It's a reminder that hitting a milestone isn't just about celebrating. It's about understanding where you actually stand in the race. And speaking of that race, let's talk about the landing. There's no denying it, New Glenn's Never Tell Me the Odds booster stuck a beautiful touchdown on the Jacklin drone ship. It was a solid success. Of course, you can't directly compare it to Falcon 9. One is a heavy lift rocket, the other is a medium lift workhorse. But what happens when you compare it to Starship's landing method? That's where things get interesting. Before we get to Starship's approach, let's start with New Glenn's landing method, the classic drone ship touchdown. It's a technique that feels familiar, largely because SpaceX has been refining it for nearly a decade. New Glenn's first stage stands about 57 meters tall and runs on seven BE-4 engines burning liquid methane and oxygen. The idea is simple in theory. Bring the booster back from the edge of space and set it down vertically on Jacklin, a 116-meter autonomous barge stationed hundreds of miles off Florida's coast. On the NG-2 mission, November 13, 2025, the booster, never tell me the odds, nailed its landing just nine minutes after stage separation. That's especially notable considering its first attempt back in January ended in a breakup at Mach 5.5 due to re-entry instability. The booster uses four actuated aerodynamic surfaces to keep itself stable during atmospheric descent, with strakes generating lift and helping fine-tune its cross-range path. As it approaches the drone ship, the engines reignite to bleed off speed from thousands of kilometers per hour to just a few meters per second. Six hydraulic landing legs deploy automatically to absorb the final impact while GPS and radar guide the booster onto a platform that's literally moving with three to five meter ocean swells. The real challenge isn't the rocket, it's the ocean. Wind, waves, and a drifting target force the guidance software to be incredibly precise, something SpaceX only mastered after dozens of attempts with Falcon 9. But even when everything works, this method comes with baggage. A drone ship has to be towed into position, operated remotely, and later hauled back to port for booster recovery. That can take days, sometimes weeks. It also requires a sizable crew, tugboats, support ships, and a long logistics chain. All of that adds cost, time, and complexity. Things that don't scale well, if your goal is rapid, airline-style reuse. Now, let's switch over to Starship's landing method with Mechazilla, a completely different level of ambition. Instead of touching down on a drone ship, the Super Heavy Booster, a 70-meter monster weighing more than 3,000 tons when fully fueled and powered by 33 Raptor engines, gets caught by two giant mechanical arms on the launch tower at Starbase. This system had its first successful catch during Flight 5 on October 13th last year. Funny enough, the same exact date New Glenn pulled off its first landing, but the Mechazilla catch is on a whole different level of difficulty. Right after hot staging at about 70 kilometers up, the booster fires a cluster of 13 Raptors to start bleeding off speed. 
Then it transitions to just the three center engines, hovering precisely over the tower while those massive chopstick arms, each weighing hundreds of tons, close in. Using hydraulic actuators and laser sensors, the arms grab onto the load points under the grid fins. And all of this happens in around seven minutes from separation to catch. The required precision, less than a meter, with the booster dropping in at roughly five to 10 meters per second. The Makazilla Tower itself is a 145 meter steel giant. Thanks to its sheer mass and built-in shock absorption, it can handle the enormous forces involved. On top of that, SpaceX uses real-time trajectory prediction software, basically an AI guidance system, to adjust the tower's position just enough to meet the booster mid-air. The challenge here is completely different from a drone ship landing. A ship can drift and correct itself at sea. A fixed tower can't move much at all. Any weather issue or tiny mistake in the booster's guidance could mean slamming straight into the launch pad infrastructure. SpaceX engineers have poured tens of thousands of hours into simulations to deal with the crazy physics of stopping a booster that's about three times heavier than New Glenn and doing it without landing legs. That means tougher re-entry heating, stricter control margins, everything. But the results speak for themselves. Two clean catches in a row, Flight 7 and Flight 8, with the boosters coming down intact. And if things stay on track, SpaceX expects to start catching the Starship upper stage next year. But why, despite being so risky and complicated, is this approach still so much more impressive, especially for a heavy lift rocket? First, nobody else on Earth has ever pulled this off. SpaceX is the only company that has actually caught a booster with tower arms. China is trying to copy the idea, but their progress is still pretty unclear. Second, in terms of difficulty, a drone ship landing, like what New Glenn just did, is simply a much easier problem. The ship can drift and reposition over a wide area, which gives the booster more room for error. On top of that, New Glenn's booster is smaller and lighter, so the guidance system doesn't have to fight nearly as much momentum. A lot of experts compare it like this. Landing on a drone ship is catching a fish with a big net, while Makazilla is catching a falling knife with your bare hands. One has a wide margin, the other basically has none. The tower demands an order of magnitude more precision because it's fixed on land. If the booster misses by even a meter or two, it's game over for the entire launch site. As Elon Musk said on X, shock absorption is built into tower arms. Since tower is ground side, it can use a lot more mass to arrest booster downward momentum. And that's where things get even harder. Stopping a multi-thousand ton booster without landing legs means dealing with crazy vibration modes, resonance, and sideways shear forces that can reach into the millions of newtons. If engineers can't master challenges at this level, don't even think about aiming for Mars. But the real magic of Mechazilla isn't just the difficulty, it's the efficiency it unlocks for a heavy lift rocket. With this system, rapid reuse becomes a real possibility. Imagine this. Right after the booster sticks the catch, the arms lower it onto a transporter, and the whole stack rolls straight back to the production site. In just a few hours, engineers can start inspections and prep work. With New Glenn, it's the opposite. The booster has to sit on a drone ship for days before the ship even heads back to port. That round trip alone slows everything down, which is why Blue Origin admitted in its FAA filings that the initial launch cadence will be only one or two flights per month. Starship is aiming for something radically different three to five flights per week. If SpaceX gets there, the cost could drop to around $100 per kilogram to orbit. That's an order of magnitude cheaper than New Glenn's, projected $1,000 to $2,000 per kilogram, even with reuse. And at that price point, suddenly big missions like Artemis or long-term Mars supply runs become realistic because they need hundreds of flights, not a handful. And there's one last thing that pushes Mechazilla into its own category scalability. The tower isn't just designed to catch the booster. In the future, it can catch the upper stage too, making Starship a fully reusable launch system. New Glenn still discards its upper stage every time, which means it can never escape the economics of partial reuse. This is the leap from reusable rockets to industrial reuse. SpaceX is basically building the factory model for spaceflight, where harder engineering leads to better economics and a sustainable path for heavy lift missions. Overall, after Blue Origin's NG2 mission, Elon Musk has probably had one big realization. Even though Blue Origin spent years trailing behind, they've been quietly stacking bricks, 
building momentum and positioning themselves to one day challenge SpaceX for the title of world's top private space company. Not by blindly chasing SpaceX, but by moving carefully, methodically, with progress solid enough that even NASA has to acknowledge their capability. And the clearest proof? The next New Glenn mission, planned for January 2026, is set to deliver Blue Moon MK-1, the largest lunar lander ever flown, capable of carrying up to three tons of cargo and touching down with 100-meter accuracy. It's straight to the moon's surface. They're even planning to reuse the same booster that just landed a few days ago. That's a smart move. It shows Blue Origin can launch, land, and reuse, pushing their costs down and making themselves a serious backup option if Starship keeps slipping behind schedule for Artemis III. This puts real pressure on Musk, someone who's used to setting the pace. It means SpaceX needs to double down for 2026. And that's exactly what they're doing. Starship V3 is on the way, about 1.5 meters taller than VA2, powered by ultra-efficient Raptor 3 engines and targeting its first orbital flight as early as January 2026. The top priority is the big one, catching the upper stage with Mechazilla, the milestone that would make Starship fully reusable and capable of flying hundreds of missions a year. Next up is pushing the HLS forward to outmatch Blue Moon MK-1, orbital refueling demos, ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer, and a long-duration mission proving Starship can rendezvous with NASA's Orion. All of that is required to land 100 tons on the moon. In the end, NG2 isn't just a win for Jeff Bezos. It's a reminder that America's space race now has two true heavyweights, Blue Origin with steady, conservative engineering, and SpaceX with its wild multiplanetary ambition. 2026 will decide who's actually leading, but either way, humanity wins because the moon and Mars have never felt closer.